Welcome to Power of Perspective, and thanks for joining us for this five-minute devotion in the Rising Above Anxiety series as we take a closer look at John chapter 14, verse 1. Each of these devotions are organized the same way. We will read the verse together, briefly mention the background, context, and then dive a little deeper into the meaning and ways we can apply it to our everyday life. John chapter 14, verse 1 in the New King James Version. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Let's take just a minute to reflect quietly on this verse and prayerfully consider the words. A brief history or background is important in thoroughly understanding a particular verse. John, a Palestinian Jew and one of Jesus' twelve disciples, wrote this book. He was endearingly referred to as the disciple whom Jesus loved. The book of John is one of four Gospels that recounts the life and ministry of Jesus. John authored this book sometime between the destruction of the temple in a D70 and his death in a D100. John did his writing in Ephesus, known as modern-day Turkey. It's important to read the context or verses before and after a specific verse to understand its full meaning. We'll start at chapter 14, verse 1 through verse 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let's take a look at the everyday meaning of this verse and how we can apply it to our thoughts or actions today. In this passage, Jesus has just finished the Last Supper with his disciples and was emotionally and spiritually preparing them for his arrest, death, resurrection, and departure from this world. Jesus is instructing them to not be upset or anxious when he is taken from them. He goes on to explain that the foundation for their peace should be in remembering who he is and their trust and faith in him. Then Jesus paints a beautiful picture of the heavenly homes he will make for them in heaven. A home is built for someone to live in and that reassurance is what Jesus is pressing into his disciples. He is encouraging them to keep their eyes on eternity and not the temporary trials they will go through. Then Thomas asks a clarification question. It should be mentioned that Thomas is known as the disciple who is the doubter because he always needs logical steps and tangible truth rather than believing solely on faith. Thomas asks, Jesus, how they will know the way to where he is going? Jesus' answer is simple. There is only one way to heaven and that is through him and the sacrifice he was about to make, which provided a free gift of salvation for us all. How may we apply this verse in our daily life? This should be a passage of reassurance to us, knowing that Jesus paved the way through his sacrifice for our entrance to heaven, that he ascended to prepare heaven for us, that he will return again, gathering us up to go to heaven, and that we will live there forever. What else do we need? This life is but a wisp of a breath compared to eternity. The temporary struggles, trials, and pains we experience day to day do not even compare to the joy and peace we will endlessly experience in the presence of our Heavenly Father. It is not to say that we won't carry heavy burdens here on earth that threaten to overwhelm us. However, God has promised peace despite those burdens precisely because of His promise of eternity. Keeping our minds, hearts, and eyes continually on God and all His promises is essential to accessing the promised peace. Thanks for joining us in our five-minute devotion. It is our goal to build God's online community, and we believe that we learn best from God and within the interactive fellowship with others. We truly value any comments, questions, and we also encourage any prayer requests. We check the comments regularly. If this ends your devotion time today, then we pray you have a blessed day, and if you have a few moments to spare, we encourage you to listen to one of our 10-minute worship song videos or please consider sharing this channel with those most important to you.